What's up you guys, and of course, welcome to another episode of Who Was Really Better. Now before going into this episode, I do want to cover that this is a series I've been doing for almost two years, and I actually had a six months break, apparently, um, from this series. I'm going to revive it, and I'm going to do these episodes every other week. And my hopes to have this running series again. Um, reason for falling behind was due to actually having too many Wi-Fi leaks that took really, really long time for me. These episodes take roughly three times to record and uh, fix and whatnot and do some anal analysis, which actually had become quite falling back, and that was never my intent um, to really give up on this series because I do like it and I do like talking about the individual Pokémons. And, uh, yeah, with that said, we're going to cover the two bulky water wish passers, because that's what they're known for. They are extremely versatile in their ways of actually passing wishes, and are significantly bulky. Vaporeon being introduced Generation 1, and has been superb from that generation. It's fallen behind Generation 7, but it may or may not actually have been doing with its viability itself, but rather the redundance of a lot of really, really interesting water types. That said, for pouring in a league expert is a lot more interesting because of this very reason of having a, a secondary option as an offensive water type with bulky merits and wish passing. Aloha Mola fills a similar role as for as a superb wish passer. Like I said, this is a feature they are known for, but Aloha Mola is in a higher tier and has a lot to do with its regenerator and how it actually counterplays some really, really key threats. Not to say it's better than Vaporeon because it really isn't defining that, but for the matchup it's forced to fend off against, that's what it does really well. And that's why people are relying on that Pokemon more than Vaporeon in a Smogun environment. In Lee, however, things are actually different because now, while the wish aspect is something they both do well, there are other key features for both of these Pokemon, and this is where I come in to analyze their key features. How offensive they can be, how defensive they can be, but also how supportive they can be to a team as a whole. And we're gonna start off with the Pokemon introduced first, Vaporeon. Now, quick rundown, water type, really good defensive typing. Resist, Fire Eye, Steel and Water, and Weak to Electric and Grass. Very easy to parry and very easy to synergize with. It works really well as a defensive typing, which is why these stars are great, because they are in-aspect defensive Pokemon. It really should come without doubt looking at those stats here. 113 HP. Wow. Like, EVs have a the similar spread. They have really free, really good... Uh, spiking stats, 1, 130, 110, and 195, and then they have 260s, uh, or 160 and 265s. Uh, for Vaporeon, this looks quite right. It has a really, really good spread. 130, like I said, in its HP, 65 in its attack, which is fine. 6 in defense, which is its lowest stat. However, compared at 130 HP, it still is, in theory, bulky enough to avoid off the worst aspects. 1 in 10 in its special attack is quite high. For Generation 1, this was a really high stats to actually counterplay with. But after Generation getting still having 1 in 10, yeah, it hurts. It actually is able to hurt from the special aspect, which is something that is a rare trait for defensive war types to be able to do. 95 in special defense, yeah, this Pokemon can take hits. A, on a special sign, it is absolutely able to take a super effective hit towards it and possibly survive it. And 65 in speed, yeah, it's low. It's absolutely low, but if your aspect is to be defensive, speed is not necessarily your biggest grief. Uh, looking at the likes of Jellicent, for example, which still functions fairly alright, even though it is slower, Vaporeon fills the same void, being able to retaliate really hard, it has a bolt to be able to strive for a long time, and it's easily one of those Pokemon that can soak a hit and hurt back and still recover HP. So overall, the stat distribution is super fair for Vaporeon, and which is also why it has such a high representation as one of the best bulky water types in the game. When it comes to Vaporeon's abilities, I would say both are good. Both hydration and water absorb are good, but one is absolutely better than the other. Cover hydration real fast. Um, it makes sure that during rain dance, uh, or once it rains on the field, you will be relieved and remedied from your status. This could work very well in a rain dance team, or a rain team, I should say, 
uh, and capitalize on risk, much like Gudra. But as stated, due to the key features that Vaporium works at, it isn't that supportive, and since it isn't capitalizing on its speed anyway, your rain, I wouldn't necessarily um, recommend it because there are other water types that functions way better in rain. That said, water absorb is where it's at. Water absorb is doing basically recover HP on any type of water move that's thrown at you. I do believe you recover 25% of your HP, which is quite right. And consider that high HP stat, yeah, it's it's tough seeing that HP go back. Um, reason this is a good ability is because it in theory means that Vaporeon beats other water types naturally. Um, since most bulky water types have, tend to only have Skull as their main move of attacking, Vaporeon in theory could counterplay this and get, of course, water absorb versus them and force them out. Um, a few water types have key features keeping this aspect going alive, but the reason Vaporeon is better at it is because it really has a punishing special attack too. It forces a switch, that Skull or Surf or Hydro Pump is going to hurt. And um, yeah, just overall, it makes Vaporeon very, very interesting because it is bulky enough to force force plays and force force switches, but also able to win versus other bulky war types, which is a very, very strong trait. Consider most team will consider of a water war type that is most likely bulky. Uh, but with that said, a Pokemon is only as good as its move pool allows it to be. So how fair is Vaporeon's move pool? Well. It is a defensive water type, which in theory means it's quite shallow. However, while shallow, it's still relevant as it has a lot of good key features and it makes it both offensive, defensive and supportive. It's It has all the traits, it just don't excel at everything at it. Um, just, just gonna cover and show the bat. Aqua Tail, Bat and Pass. Bat and Pass is good to mention because in League Aspect it does mean that you can pivot and this is what something that the EVs are in general famous for. It is bad in smoke gun, but in leagues they usually are allowing bad and pass just for switching alone. Uh, that would detect double edge, scold, shadow ball, signal beam, hyper pump, hyper voice, ice beam, protect, quick attack, acid armor, aqua ring, attract, just gonna don't know why I had that to get it with signal beam again. Damn you smoke gun showdown really are messing my up here. <laughs> Sleep Talk, Substitute, Surf, Toxic, Waterfall, Wish, Synchro Noise, which I'm just gonna mention real fast. If you fend up against something or face a team with Toxic Pegs or um, Tentacruel, this is such a good move to have because Synchro Noise means that you hit your opponent with psychic based damage um, if you have shared the same typing. It is a very niche movement in League aspects. Well, joke's on you. <laughs> then we have Assault, Frustration, Haze. Heal Bell, Hit Power, Electric, uh, Aurora Beam, Baby Doll Eyes, Tickle, Reflect, Refresh, Rest, Return, Roar, Water Pulse, Whirlpool, and Walk Up. Um, so the key features here to take away is that Scald, um, Surf, and Hyro Pump are your main stab moves, which is quite right. Ice Beam is usually a fair filler, and then you're up to using either Shadow Ball or Signal Beam to be able to deal with either other opposing grass types, or just overall, Shadow Ball is a good neutral hit versus most things. Uh, it has priority in aqua quick attack while it is isn't i should say the strongest offensive pokemon just that it has priority is a rare trade alone um, and then we have um with roar which is something that is also really good to have mainly because facing is something that aloma mola doesn't have and um well just be able to stay up versus a matchup that can't sit up versus you which is why haste is such a good thing too means that this is a Pokemon that you will have to beat with usually your stats alone. You can't set up versus it without, without being punished. Um, and then we have Heal Bell, great supportive move. And uh, if you go into have a Wish passing variant with only Protect and um, Wish, Heal Bell and Skull could be just that right filler if you don't want to capitalize on Toxic. But overall, this Pokemon has the means to do a lot of roles very well. It can be very offensive, it can be very defensive, and it's good to support the team as a whole. Um, and even actually can stop potential sweeps depending on how fast or slow the sweeper is. Um, so overall, while Vaporeon is in you today, it has been a very high, highly rated Pokemon throughout Smoke on Environment. It just, this last year has fallen behind due to how offensive the game have gotten. That said, in a league aspect, it's highly sought after and very high valued. 
because as a wish passer it is still really really good it has supportive option which makes it quite right and it works versus other bulky water types which is a key feature that are sought after because in the end of the day you're going to find up against teams that are going to have water, water types that could be potentially more bulky and wally I was going to say Evaporo can I cover that quite effortlessly and make it a well-rounded good supportive Pokemon it is whether or not all of these good traits are enough to compare to the big fish that is called Alomomola and well let's find out so when we talk about the Mula, we really are focusing on those stats um, because War Type, yeah, it's the same. It's bulky, really good blue Pokemon, uh, but the stat distribution are quite interesting here because much like Vaporeon, we have a high HP stat. This time though, it's not 130; it's 165. Yeah, that's 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 a lot of HP. That's it's ridiculously high, and it's. In theory, stronger, of course, than Vaporeon with 75 in his attack instead of 60. This means your physical attack is absolutely going to do more. It doesn't mean it's used them, but it has the aspect to cover them up. Uh, defense, yeah, 80 over 60. This is a Pokemon that takes physical hits a lot better than Vaporeon. With counter, of course, of the HP stat also. It's just, it resolves those too well. Special attack, however, 40. Yeah, compared to that 110 on Vaporeon. This is a Pokemon that not stings super effectively, or a lot, I should say, overall. Um, for in the special attack, you'd be surprised to see this Pokemon carrying Skull, but it's just not good of a move as a whole, with passive damage and whatnot. But yeah, 40 is it's absolutely low. Uh, 45 in special defense is also there, while high HP and still remedy some of that. Uh, compared to a poor 65 base, yeah, it's 50 base stats apart. Um, special hits really do sting this Pokemon, no matter how you twist and turn things. And the speed are the same. So, in theory, I would say this is Pokemon, it's bulkier on its defensive side, a lot worse on its special defensive side, and it doesn't threaten you offensively. Vaporeon has a key feature to force switches. Aloha Mola is not that, but it's one of those Pokemon that comes in and aren't necessarily threatened uh, by the Pokemon it's fend off against and uh, its ability kind of states for it. Um, healer is redundant in this generation, hope it gets resolved someday. Hydration is the same as Vaporeon of course and are for all sense of purposes worthless because Regenerator is such a good ability. Once you switch out you get 30% of your HP back. That's yeah, that's why Alomomola is such a sort of Pokemon, because it is a Pokemon that can switch in and out, and um, in theory, it loses nothing for it. Um, it kills momentum, and it can regain momentum because it forces switches. Regenerator is, yeah, it's just resolving a lot of its main issues. It probably wouldn't have been that good, consider its stats alone. Uh, but yeah, overall, really, really good, well rounded Pokemon. It's absolutely bulkier than Vaporeon, but offensively just not as key as Vaporeon. But as always, the move pool is what we're going to talk about, so let's... Well, well let's talk about it. Because Aloha Mola has an interesting move pool. It doesn't mean that it's workable, but it's absolutely usable. First and foremost, we have a priority in Aqua Jet, Call Mind, Fazard, Bounce, Healing Wish, Hidden Power, this time Electric mentioned as its most common hidden power. Uh, Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Knock Off, Light Screen, Liquidation, Magic Coat, Scald, Shadow Ball, Sleep Talk, Substitute, Surf, Toxic, Pain Split, do not use that. Protect, Psychic, Refresh, Rest, Return, Waterfall, Wish, Scald, Awkward Ring, Attract, Blizzard, Soak, Swagger, Tickle, Wake Up Slap, Water Pulse, and Whirlpool. So, yeah, those are, these are the moves that you mostly used. You'd be surprised to know that Pain Split was a part of that. I don't know who that person is, but if you used it, you are absolutely the worst in this game. I just <laughs> I just want to have that covered. Uh, since I take this list from Smogon, I take the mostly used moves and then just pick up a few niche moves that should be mentioned. First and foremost, yeah, this is a Pokemon that absolutely can use its physical attack. Um, as stated, Liquidation is a really good stab move and should absolutely be used. Knockoff, same thing here, really workable with this Pokemon as a whole. Um, I have seen C-Bounce, I really want to cover that as a whole. It's 
very interesting to see this Pokemon Goose sea bounce. Um, probably not viable, but absolutely wonderful to see. Uh, Magic Coat is something that should be mentioned, as much like Melodic, um, the physical prowess do force people to use special attack versus this Pokemon. If you can't guarantee that KO, 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 Magic Coat can be a key feature to retaliate and possibly kill a Pokemon because you have such a high HP, you are going to hurt something really badly. Um, and then we have Healing Wish. Um, while Vaporeon had Heal Bell, and I'll give it all the credit for being for no, 9 times out of 10 the, the better aspect, having Healing Wish is a great supportive aspect because if your defensive Pokemon is no longer needed, you can save an offensive Pokemon that gets whittled down with a Loma Mola. That's always a good thing. Then we Refresh, much like Vaporeon, this is a Pokemon that potentially could stall Pokemon out because Refresh is just that good. Okay, getting you out of your course, that um, possible toxic stall. And then we have Soak. <laughs> just being able to Pokemon that could potentially wall you, such as Toxipex, yet again mention Soak them, then Toxic. Well, Toxipex can do the same to you, just that you get this thing Toxic and it will be whittled down. It's great. <laughs> and Wake Up Slap should only be mentioned because of one thing. I've seen piece people use this when they're fending off against um, Sand Team. They send in Tyranitar, and Aloha Mola is very close to Oko in it with Wake Up Slab. It's, it's a very weird thing to see, but it's a really good aspect to it. And of course, Whirlpool, always mentioned as, well, you can potentially lock in Pokemon with you for a few turns for a rounds of Toxic. So overall, Aloha Mola has a very, very good supportive move. Like I said, it isn't as offensively scary as Vaporeon, but defensively, I think it's more reliable, and it can punish more Pokemon defensively because of its key features. And, of course, with the synergization of having Regenerator, um, it can stay alive much more reliably than Vaporeon. But besides that, the wish-passing aspect is still the same, and offensively, I still believe Vaporeon is a lot better than Loma Mola, it's just the defensive aspect and the supportive aspect that are tilting a little bit more in Loma Mola's favor. So before I talk about the end result itself, I do want to cover that I had a vote on Twitter where we talked about these two Pokemon and Vaporeon won with almost 70% of the vote. It was no discussion there, Vaporeon was deemed the better. And I, like I said, I easily see why as Vaporeon is versus Loma Mola, a lot more flexible as a whole. It does what Alola Mola does with wish passing and whatnot. While it isn't as reliable wish passing as Alola Mola, just as with it can do it and still it can pivot, it can face, uh, and of course it can wish pass. It's offensively scarier, so it can use Shadow Ball, Signal Beam, Ice Beam, and just Hydro Pump really reliably and still be a key threat. These are aspects to make this Pokemon a lot more sought after in League. And. Um, I think due to that, it's absolutely deemed to be one of the better war types, and I'll give it that. I think it's absolutely wonderful. And, uh, well, another aspect that should be covered is that Vaporeon is just a much more, more likable Pokemon. Um, I mean, look at them. Vaporeon, for many people, are the best EVs they, EV they got. It absolutely solved a lot of issues that Blasters Generation 1 could do. Vaporeon was sought to be OU until Generation 6. That's as good as it was. Aloha Mola, however, it doesn't have a fan base, but it is a absolutely a workable wish passing Pokemon. And it's stated supportively more reliable than Vaporeon. It just offensively it's too passive. And I absolutely hate people who use this Pokemon because it is just so boring to fend off against. But I'll give it credit though. Those credits are that it while it has issues, it's in its defensives, it can actually retaliate due to mirror code. The wish passing are fatter, regenerate to make sure it doesn't have to stay in to recover. It just overall more tankier and more reliable than let's say Vaporeon. And there is where this dialogue comes down to. That both of these two Pokemon are in first hand drafted because of the water bulkness they do represent. And with that said, Aloha Mola is the better tanky Pokemon between these two. I can easily say Vaporeon is better due to his offensive aspect when it comes to be a key glue 
and work for more teams offensively, defensively, or supportive, Alola Mola is just that much more reliable as a whole and is the reason it wins this matchup because the reliance in how this Pokemon function are the that much more steadier than Vaporeon's. Not to say that Vaporeon is, is bad, because it isn't. I Having that vote together with actually looking upon these Pokemon stats as a whole, Vaporeon offers so many things. It just doesn't excel in every one of them. Aloha Mola absolutely fails as an offensive Pokemon. But the other two aspects which I think are so important, it is just that much more better in. I've seen people use this Pokemon with red card to get other free switches and we have situations here where Almola can actually stall out Pokemon alone due to its bulkiness and wish passing. Vaporeon, it can do that, but it isn't as reliant to do that. And of course with C Celebrate now not being, or Omniboosting not being allowed in leagues, the best part about Vaporeon is actually banned from something so interesting. I think had C Celebration been allowed, there would be no contest, Vaporeon would just knock it out of the park but as stated one of its key features are banned and it's hold this pokemon back quite significant and we can only of course compare it to face value and if we're doing that then alomola is simply better because of its supported pool it just comes down to that um but that said i absolutely new found respect for vaporeon and who anybody who thinks it's different that thinks vaporeon is better i won't disagree with you I absolutely won't. I can easily see why Vaporeon has the fanbase it is. It is a lot better than I remember it, and I think it's a great Pokemon. Alone more like I said it just solves those key features better, and that's why it wins this matchup. So, as always guys, thank you for of course watching and join us next week for this matchup.